Hi guys, my name is Barry and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Lee Winnell's Upgrade from 2018. Now this movie is five years old, so there is going to be spoilers in this video. If you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, then maybe don't watch this review until after you've seen it. If you don't mind spoilers, or if you've seen the movie, then continue watching. Now first off, this movie is set in the future, I believe. I don't think it does state a date of when this is set, so I don't know how far in the future it is, but the future that we have in this film, or this, the place that we live in, it still looks decent, it looks futuristic, it looks very dark and moody, but it also looks familiar as well, and I really like that about that because it doesn't take me too far out, and there's still familiar things about it, especially the main character. Now you've got a guy, just like Will Smith, and iRobot where this guy is nostalgic for things from back in the day and when I say back in the day these days he likes his Budweiser, he likes manual things, he likes manual cars, he even makes cars for a living or does them up and sells them so you've always got that one person in futuristic movies like this to latch on to because we believe that we are part of his story and we like the same things that he does and that's something that I love that Lee Winnell has done he's brought a character into the movie that we can all resonate with, we can all connect to therefore when we see him we can then follow him on his journey and we feel the pain he feels the film has a very simple plot and in fact it's so simple it reminds me of plots from back in the 80s and 90s when life was simpler uh, and you've got a guy called Grey Trace and his wife Asha Grey is the, the simple guy, he's the guy who likes all the nostalgic stuff. And then you've got his wife Asha, who is futuristic. She works for a big tech company and she's got the flashy car, etc. And he's he kind of bounces off of her because she likes the future stuff and he likes the older stuff. They've got really good chemistry as well. Unfortunately for both of them, they're in a car accident. We don't know how it happened at first, but they're in a car accident. Asha gets killed by these guys who come over to the car. They both survive. The, the car crash, but they kill Asha from point blank range and they disable um, Grey to the point where he is a quadriplegic and he has to live his life as a quadriplegic. And it is tough because as a quadriplegic, a paraplegic or whatever, if your wife has died in an accident or died and saw someone kill them, the first thing you want to do is find out how, why, and try and get revenge. But for him, being a quadriplegic, he can't do anything about it. All he can do is sit back and watch, or try and kill himself, or wait to die, and that's it. And there's no way to live. And I think that Logan Marshall Green, as Grey, gave a fantastic performance as a guy who's grieving the death of his wife and seeing it in his face, knowing there's nothing he can do about it, and it's just so heartbreaking. So Logan Marshall Green was amazing in this film, but the turning point for me was when he found out one of the guys that he was selling cars to told him that he's working on this technology, something called STEM, and it's a little chip that can go into your brain or connect to your spine and talk to your brain and make your body do things, and he thinks that Grey being a quadriplegic would be a really good candidate for that. So he puts STEM inside of him and he's able to walk again. But not only that, the person who created STEM didn't know that STEM could speak, or at this point, he didn't know that STEM could speak to you with inside, inside your brain, similar to Venom in the Venom movie. So STEM can not only do things your body can't do, or make your body do things that your body can't do, it can also talk to you, give you information, tell you to do things and this gave Grey an opportunity not to live a, a really good life because that's not what he wanted. He wanted to be able to find out who killed his wife and why. All the way throughout the movie you get that Lee Winnell flavour. If you've seen Invisible Man you know what I'm talking about. The, the camera angles that Lee Winnell gives us, it's just all so immersive and just it makes you feel like they're there because of the way the camera moves with Grey and his body. So the camera movements were great. It's obviously a bloody movie as well. Being Lee Winnell, being part of the Saw and Insidious franchise, then obviously you're going to have to have a little bit of blood in it and we do. We get some brutal death scenes in the movie as well which is fantastic. Uh, I can't show them here because they are really brutal. There's some fun scenes in the movie as well because Grey is obviously supposed to be a quadriplegic but he's got a police officer on his ass so he has to at times pretend to still be quadriplegic and it's really cool because STEM can turn off at any point if he wants to so then he can be a true quadriplegic, quadriplegic. so if someone wants to put pins in his legs and stuff then he won't move and it's fine and then STEM can turn himself on and off whenever he wants. The issue that Grey has 
is he's on the, the race against time because the creator of STEM at this point in the movie doesn't want Grey to go out in the world and be noticed because he doesn't want his technology taken off of him. So when he finds out that Grey's going on his own personal mission, he tells Grey, if you do it again, I'm going to have to shut STEM down. So as he's shutting STEM down, Grey has to try and find a hacker to hack STEM for him so that he doesn't become quadriplegic again and he can still go on his mission. But in doing so, STEM gets a bit of a life of its own because he's no longer living under the parameters of a firewall. And that was STEM's idea all the way through the movie because STEM, when we find out at the end, STEM wasn't a, just a piece of technology. STEM was in control of everyone. STEM controlled his creator. STEM controlled the guys who killed Asha and therefore controlled the people who made Grey a quadriplegic. So it was STEM's idea all the way from the beginning. Grey is an organic being, he's a manual guy, whereas there's other characters in the film with guns attached to their skin, so they're not very organic. So STEM needed a, a true organic person to go into to use as a body, because STEM is a mind at the moment, it wants to be a mind and a body. Grey was the person that I wanted to be. So everything that led up to him being STEM was all created by STEM. STEM was in control of everyone and everything. It wasn't a major twist in the film. I did kind of see it coming that STEM was going to try and take over, but it was something nice to see. It was something different, something that we hadn't seen since the days of the 80s and 90s, all the action thrillers that we got back then, movies like Total Recall and stuff. You don't get movies like that anymore, so when a movie like that comes out, then we kind of latch onto it, and Upgrade is, an ex is one of those examples. You can't help but compare Upgrade to Venom. It's just natural to do so because of the, the storylines that they have. You get someone who's taken over by some sort of being that can talk to them inside their head and give them superhuman strength. All that kind of thing happens in Venom, but it also happens in Upgrade. But the thing about Upgrade is it's infinitely better it's executed a whole lot better as well than Venom was. It's more realistic, obviously, because Venom is a Marvel movie, of course, and it's obviously better acted as well. And it doesn't help that a lot of people compare Logan Marshall Green to Tom Hardy because they both of them look like each other. They could be twins, which is ironic because Logan Marshall Green also has an actual twin. My only issue with Upgrade was it wasn't on long enough, and that might be a good thing. The film was just over an hour, an hour and a half, and I felt like I wanted to see more because at the end of the film, when STEM took over and that was it, I wanted to see a little bit more of that because STEM sent Grey's mind to a happier place. So I think that Grey got a happier place at the end because he was with his wife in this little mind bubble, which is fine and STEM got to do what he wanted to do. I would have liked to see maybe an five or 10 more minutes of STEM going out and killing people or people trying to kill STEM and seeing what he was able to do at his full potential. That's my only issue that I had, but it still ended great because Grey got his happy ending. And I think because I loved Grey as a character, that I was happy that he got the ending that he wanted because he didn't want to live. He was a quadriplegic, he didn't have his wife, albeit it was all at the hands of STEM, but STEM did give him that last chance to be with his wife and it looks like a happy ending for him. Maybe, maybe not. So to me guys, this is one of the best horror slash thriller slash action movies that I've seen over the last 30 years. That's how great this movie was. It took me back to the olden days of the Paul Verhoeven movies like Robocop, Total Recall, all those kind of films that we got back in the day that had a lot of action, sci-fi, thriller, horror in it. It's all gone, but Upgrade kind of rejuvenated that for me. So for me, Upgrade is, a, is an amazing film. It's a great film, highly underrated because a lot of people haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it, guys, I highly recommend it. But what do you think, for the guys who have seen it, what do you think of the movie? Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Get you, Barbara. Ever play in the cat? I want to look back. See.